Commissioners, I want to start by saying thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today. My name is Vijay Pendakur, and I'm the Associate Vice President for Student Affairs at California State University, Fullerton. My testimony aims to support and augment earlier testimony of Chancellor White on the impact of federal financial aid programs on educational attainment for minority students, specifically through the lens of Cal State Fullerton. Chancellor, Chancellor White often says, and I firmly believe, that access without the opportunity to succeed is not true access. A meaningful education means not only getting your foot in the door, but being empowered with the support to persist and succeed all the way through to graduation. Enrolling in college is a critical step for low-income, minority, and first-generation students, but this is only the first step in a long educational journey, along which these students face proportionally greater social, culture, cultural, and economic barriers than other students. At Cal State Fullerton, we have an intimate understanding of the barriers they face, and we have a proven record of giving them not just access, but a collegiate experience with the possibility of great success. As one of the largest campuses in the largest state university system in the nation, Cal State Fullerton is a model comprehensive university for inclusion, proudly serving a diverse student body. We are a designated Hispanic serving institution and an Asian American and Native American Pacific Islander serving institution. 63% of our 38,000 students identify as Native American, Black, Hispanic, Asian and Pacific Islander or multi-ethnic. 43% of our undergraduates are Pell Grant recipients, and 57% are first-generation college students. Yet, at Cal State Fullerton, we recognize that access alone is not enough. We are also a national model for student success, ranked first in California and 10th in the nation for graduating Latinos, and fourth in the nation for graduating underrepresented minority students. Furthermore, our, student graduate, our students graduate with less debt than the average public university graduate and earn higher salaries over time. These historic achievements are a foundation for even further growth. Beginning in 2012, Cal State Fullerton President Mildred Garcia initiated a strategic planning process to establish a metrics-driven plan to guide our institution towards the goal of becoming a national model for how a public comprehensive university can boost graduation rates through the thoughtful efforts to keep students connected to their education and empowered on their way to a degree. I have detailed many of the relevant strategic plan activities in my written testimony, but want to highlight several initiatives that might be of particular interest to the Commission today. Cal State Fullerton is proud to house six TRIO and Gear Up programs, which consist of Educational Talent Search, Upward Bound, two Gear Up Grants, Student Support Services, and the McNair Scholars Program. Educational Talent Search, Upward Bound, and our two Gear Up Grants serve nearly 4,500 students who attend local high schools with the highest need and schools that enroll the majority of their students in free and reduced lunch programs. These pre-college programs have a profound impact on the student participants and our assessment results speak to these programs' success with over 90% of the participants enrolling in college after they finish high school. Beyond establishing a strong pipeline for access, Cal State Fullerton also offers programs to bolster student success and educational quality for our first generation and underrepresented college students. Our Student Support Services program aims to increase the college retention and graduation rates of participants through academic advising, tutoring, financial aid advising, and other program services. Student Support Services serves 160 undergraduate students at Cal State Fullerton who come from first generation, low income, or disabled backgrounds. And the participants achieve a six year graduation rate that is nearly 16% higher than the institutional average. In addition, to our Student Support Services program, we also run a McNair Scholars program committed to empowering higher risk and underrepresented students with access to graduate education. Nationally, only 11% of doctoral degree recipients in 2013 were from historically underrepresented backgrounds, racial backgrounds. Programs like the McNair Scholars work to expand our nation's population of highly trained intellectual leaders by creating a pipeline for greater diversity in future doctoral degree recipients. By showcasing our innovative approach to fostering greater access in the community while also creating a campus ecosystem conducive to retention and graduation, Cal State Fullerton can be seen as a case study for what may be possible at the national level. We are already achieving great things with our past and current initiatives, but without continued and expanded federal support, these initiatives are unsustainable. 
The current limitations in federal funding disproportionately affect the students that rely most heavily on programs and grants from the federal government. These limitations are adding additional obstacles for students on their pathway to transformative learning and degree completion. We are also keenly aware that these limitations and obstacles to students can easily be remedied. We believe that a return to the year-round year Pell Grant program would serve as a powerful driver for our students to finish their, their college degrees in a timely manner. My president, Mildred Garcia, often speaks about higher education being a private good and a public good. Having just watched, having just finished spring commencement at Cal State Fullerton, I watched 60,000 family members and friends celebrate the achievement of a private good, the attainment of a college degree. When our newly minted titans advance in the workforce, raise productive families, and contribute to uplifting their communities, they are achieving the public good that higher education has to offer our society. It is our moral imperative to protect and institutionalize the programs that ultimately result in equitable just equitable enrollment. This is one of the key civil rights issues of our time. Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and I welcome any questions you might have. Thank you. I was just going to tag onto the back end of Chancellor White's comments uh, with some specific uh, remarks from Cal State <coughs> Fullerton's vantage point. I recently made, I'm a, I'm a new addition to Cal State Fullerton, and I, my past experiences um, for a number of years have been working on st issues of student retention, persistence, and timely graduation in selective institutions or flagship state institutions. And so I thought, okay, I'm coming to Cal State Fullerton, I've, I've done my research, I've got a good idea of what's going on here. And in entering an environment that is 98% commuter, 50% Pell, majority minority, HSI, and a PZ, a lot of the, uh, the methodologies that are very normative at flagship state institutions and selective private institutions um, are, are limited in their scalability, right? And so the emphasis at Cal State Fullerton has really been on um, persistence and timely graduation strategies that are eminently scalable. And so one of the you know, sort of more granular points I wanted to add to the conversation is it, the importance of, of things like um, of technology. Uh, we, we don't have the funds to hire the number of academic advisors to meet NACADA standards, right? We're, we're not gonna get to that 250 to one ratio on academic advisors to students to do truly transformative, intrusive advising every step of the way. But what we can do is, is onboard technologies that allow the academic advising staff that we do have to use a much more sophisticated predictive analytics platform to make sure that the advising time they spend with students is spent on the students who need the help the most and on the students who are most likely to benefit from one to two points of academic advising engagement across their first two years at the institution. So uh, really leveraging, uh, I think, what in the private sector would be called big data, right, to, to benefit core practices like academic advising. Alternately, putting technology in the students' hands, allowing them to use a mobile platform to bring a sense of coherence to their degree pathway. One of the things we know on the persistent side is that whenever students see a diffuse, murky sea of, you've got nine million options on your way to graduation, it actually can result in some level of analysis paralysis, right, and the inability to move forward. An hour ago, we were talking about uh, community college swirl, right, and, and the inability to, to, to really leverage that associate's degree effectively. Well, we're able to put technology in students' hands now, um, and, and soon we'll be better at it, that allow them to to really uh, see their degree pathway mapped out for them from their first year forward, right? So that they can say, you know, I'm thinking about switching from this major to that major, which is very common, right? Um, what will the implications be on all the credits I've brought into the system, and how will that reorganize itself so that my time to degree doesn't change? What, what do I need to do as a result of this, this shift in career discernment and the need for a new major? Um, and so that they don't have to be able to sit down with an advisor for an hour to map that out, we've been, able to, we've been able to access technology that'll remap it for them. And so I think the combination of some of these really scalable enterprise-wide solutions we're looking at uh, are important in the thinner budgets and in the very high-risk ecosystem that an access-focused comprehensive like the Cal States embody. Commissioner Kirsten, one of the things you said really uh, uh, struck a chord. I, uh, Right now, the, the largest public um, coherent effort to try and address a lot of the problems you're naming um, is the Access to Success Initiative, right? It's, uh, 
it's 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 a it's a national effort. It's uh, over 20, 22, I think, um, state systems are involved, hundreds of institutions, to try and connect historic commitments to access to actual uh, issues of college success. And the, the, the learning that I want to share with you from the midterm report that came out in 2012 is that strategies that affect overall improvements in, in persistence and graduation for students in, in four, five, and six year grad rates in higher education um, do not necessarily result in closing the achievement gap. So um, I think, uh, my mic's out of batteries, but I'm a loud person. So uh, the, uh, the closing the achievement gap oftentimes to, takes different microphone. strategies than, than improving the uh, overall four, five, and six year grad rates. So in the Access to Success Initiative, um, institutions were able to do a lot of good in the first five or six years of the initiative um, in moving the needle on four, five, and six year grad rates. But when you move the overall by 10 points, and let's say African American students were lagging by 15 points, and everybody moves by 10 points, African American students are still lagging by 15 points, right? So I think that there's, there's almost two conversations to be had here. How to improve the overall ecosystem of higher education so that it supports student persistence and timely graduation, and then how to Im embed identity conscious approaches to retention, persistence, empowerment for specific group members that that their identity is at the crux of, of how they're experiencing higher education, right? That's those are the institutions that have been, been able to move the needle at all on closing the achievement gap are, are doing both and are trying to also work very specifically with um, higher risk student communities to, to make sure that they are supported, mentored, you know, engaged with faculty, embedded in high impact practices, all the good stuff, right? But that has to be done with great intentionality around issues, if you're talking about the achievement gap for students of color, around race. And so uh, I think I just want to make sure that that was uh, stated for the record today.